Chapter 15 Imogen walked down the boardwalk, enjoying the way the ocean breeze smelled. The wind was biting, but she hadn't realized how much she missed the booming sound of the waves crashing into the shoreline or the piercing call of seagulls above. After spending her whole life growing up in a beachside community, she'd taken it for granted. Now that she was back, she could appreciate it much more. She stopped momentarily to lean over the railing and inhaled deeply, enjoying the salt on her skin. Despite the cold air and the late afternoon, locals were out jogging or walking their children in strollers. She ignored them as they passed by, caught in her own thoughts. Tomorrow, as a reward for her packing, she'd take some time with Cookie to visit the dog beach and play in the sand. She wasn't sure the next time she'd visit and wanted to make the most of it. Gabe would love the dog beach. She'd have to get videos for him. Pushing off the rail, she resumed her walk to meet her dad. One block later, she arrived at the modern restaurant, her eyes searching for her dad's salt and pepper hair at the bar. He was talking animatedly to Brian, the bartender, who greeted her with a big smile. Imogen. Brian came around the bar, throwing a towel over his shoulder and gave her a hug, practically lifting her off her feet. It was pretty impressive considering he wasn't the tallest man himself. Laughing, Imogen tapped his arm, encouraging him to let her down. It felt weird to be so close to another man besides Gabe. She and Brian had dated on and off over the years, casually and when they weren't dating others. They were friends, who sometimes shared benefits. It's great to see you, Brian. It's been a long time. Too long. He looked her over, cataloging her bright eyes, flushed skin, and lack of a coat. I was afraid you'd never come back. She rolled her eyes, and he laughed again. Where's your jacket, girl? It's freezing out. Imogen looked down, only now realizing she'd never put on her parka. It was cold out, but she hadn't realized it. Hmm, perhaps I'm getting thicker skin already, she thought. It's beautiful out. She shrugged, walking to sit on the stool next to her father, who wordlessly handed her a jalapeno pineapple margarita with salted rim. Yes, please. Brian walked back behind the bar, checking on other customers before making his way back to Imogen and Seb. He leaned over, his elbows supporting his weight. Your dad tells me I've lost my chance with you, and you've ended up with a mountain man. He shook his head ruefully. I'm heartbroken. Imogen laughed and rolled her eyes, as he'd intended. He'd always been able to make her laugh with his over-the-top charm. Neither one of them took it seriously. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but it's true. My heart belongs to another. Is he really a mountain man? Brian waggled his eyebrows. Seb interjected. I never said mountain man. I said he's a man, and he lives in the mountains. Brian rolled his eyes. Same things, isn't it? Everyone laughed. I've got to get back to work. It's been great to see your face. Maybe we can have dinner before you leave again? Imogen nodded noncommittedly as he tapped the bar with a fist and walked away to mix another cocktail. Seb offered his drink for a cheers, and Imogen obliged. A mountain man, Dad? Really? Seb laughed. It's true, anyway. Speaking of, how is Gabe? I'm actually surprised he didn't come with you. She sighed, focusing on stirring with her cocktail straw. After she removed the slice of jalapeno garnish, she replied, Yeah, I was hoping he'd come with me. He's got a tough work schedule, though, so I knew it wasn't likely. Besides, he had an unexpected guest. Seb raised an eyebrow, and Imogen filled him in on how Anita had shown up at his house unexpectedly and in the dark. When she was finished with the tale, he was frowning. Did he seriously pull a gun on you? Imogen grimaced. She probably should have kept that part to herself. Darn her and her big mouth. Not really. He had the gun for protection, and I was supposed to stay in the car. I surprised him is all. You're lucky he didn't shoot you, Im. I don't like the sound of this situation. It sounds like this woman has brought trouble to Gabe's door. Seb was concerned. Gabe seemed like a nice enough man, but hearing this made him nervous for his little girl. Even if that's true, Dad, he would never turn her away. He's too loyal for that. Imogen would never expect him to throw someone out, even if she was suspicious of their motives. Yes, well, how are you doing with the situation? It can't be easy to have another woman staying with him. Seb signaled Brian for another round, who nodded in response. It's not, Imogen admitted wryly. What can I do? 
I trust him. She took a big drink, finishing what remained in her glass, the ice tinkling. I trust him. She really did. Gabe had never given her any reason to think he would be the kind of man who cheated. Despite this being a new relationship, she knew he was the one for her. And, if she was being honest, she'd have to set her own feelings of unease aside and allow him to be himself. Even if that meant he had a gorgeous, mysterious woman from his past in his home. Ugh, she thought. I hate this so much. Things between them had been going so well. She had to believe that this was a temporary blip. Imogen's head dropped onto the bar, and she knocked it softly, again and again, until her dad's hand cushioned the impact. Seb knew his daughter. It wasn't like her to restrain her thoughts and feelings, but she was attempting to do just that. Gabe was clearly important to her, enough so that she was willing to step back and let him do what he thought was right. He said just that. You must really love him, kiddo. Are you getting sappy on me, Dad? Imogen pressed back, trying to deflect the question. When Seb just returned her stare, she deflated, her shoulders slumping in defeat. She could never hide anything from this man. Fine, she huffed, blowing a wayward piece of hair out of her eyes. I think I'm going to marry him. Seb raised an eyebrow. Bold words, but he expected nothing less from his bold daughter. She'd always known her own mind. Honestly, he was relieved that she had found her purpose. She'd filled him in on her plans for the sanctuary while they packed. And someone that would be a good partner for her. While he was nervous about her running a nonprofit, it was a lot of work for a little financial stability, he knew she could build something great. She was a strong personality, and it would take an equally strong man to give her freedom while also being a good partner. He asked you to marry him? He clarified. She wasn't wearing a ring and hadn't mentioned anything previously. That was big news to bury the lead on. No, you fool. Dad, lower your voice. The whole restaurant doesn't need to hear. Imogen laughed good-naturedly. Besides, no one proposed. I'm not getting married anytime soon. Sebastian was relieved. As much as I like Gabe, and I do, I'm glad to hear that. I would hate for you to make a rash decision and marry someone you just met. We've only known each other a few months. Brian took that moment to come over and refresh their drinks, bringing a food menu with him. Imogen, you're getting married? My heart, it's breaking. He pretended to faint. Ah, Brian, ever prone to dramatics. Just one of the reasons they never would have worked out as a couple. There could only be one drama queen in a relationship. Imogen rolled her eyes, but laughed at his antics. You're not funny, guys. No one is rushing into anything, I promise. She took a sip of her fresh drink, picked up the menu, thinking. I can't explain it, though. When I picture my future, he's with me. Gabe is everything I never knew I needed. Imogen wasn't usually one to romanticize, so the feelings she expressed surprised even her. For Sebastian's part, Gabe seemed like a good man, and if he made his daughter happy, that was all he really wanted. So you're saying he's smart, handsome, and hardworking? He laughed when she threw a cocktail napkin at him. I'm happy for you. It was true. He was happy for her even if it meant letting his daughter go to another man three states away. It was bittersweet to watch her finally find herself and plan a future. Well, I'm not, Brian interjected with a frown. Who is this guy who's stolen you away from me? Sebastian spoke up, shushing his daughter with a wave. She fell in love with a small-town veterinarian while she was helping my sister. Brian frowned. Imogen, he's not even from New Jersey. He won't know what a good bagel tastes like or what a pork roll is. How can you live your life like that? It's a travesty. Imogen and Sebastian laughed at his antics. It was great to be home again. The people were like no other. She gave Brian her food order and laughed as her stomach rumbled. The cuisine was pretty awesome, too.